I'm Janae Tires and I am the owner of Tires Essentials and today I'm going to show you how you can wrap your textured tops of your cold process soaps in a paper wrap even if the texture is uneven, you know, if there's high peaks, low valleys, you can still do it. I'm going to go through the steps of showing you how to design a wrap for your soap so that you can include your branding, your ingredients, the weight, all of that, even some beautiful design. I'm gonna use Canva for the design, and then I'm just gonna print it out with a regular inkjet printer on standard um, eight and a half by 11 paper. You'll see that it is a little bit more difficult to get those creases the first time, but just keep practicing and you'll figure out a way that works best for you. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started. So as you can see here, I've used my soap wrapping tool with some printed soap wrappers. I use my inkjet printer, really simple, very cost effective. I'm gonna show you how to set all this up in Cricut and print the PDF. And it's very, very easy. So first what I did is I needed to find out what size my paper should be. So I have mine at 6.3 by 8.75. I'm going to create a Canva project in this size. Canva is a great online software. It's free. You can just jump right in and start designing. It's super fun. So I'm going to try to develop the template for the soap wrapping paper. I want to show you how to do this. So I start by creating a square, just a basic simple square that I added to the canvas and I'm sizing it to the size of my soap bar. My soap bar is three inches by three inches. Now, like I said, my soaps are textured, so they vary. Um, so the average size is about three inches by three inches. And now I'm just creating like an outline shape that's gonna give me like a guide or a grid to design my uh, elements for the soap wrapper. I've made my three by three inch square and that's like the face of the soap. And now the depth of my soap is about one inch. So I created another rectangular shape at one inch and copied it for both sides. So that gives me the, the depth that I need. And finally, the ends are going to be like the wrap that goes around the back side of the soap bar. And you'll find that this kind of overlaps um, on the back side when you use the soap wrapping tool. Now I'm going to look for some design elements. And my soap is scented in white tea fra fragrance that is like fresh and clean and really organic and kind of sweet and I want to find some graphics that can play off of that so I kind of liked this um, type styling um, and you can just ignore that like uh, uh, alert bar at the top that says your recent changes haven't been saved that's because my internet was dropping in and out we have terrible internet but you can continue to work and just save you know occasionally so I'm searching through the templates. I added a second page so I can just kind of add the, de um, the design elements to that page and work them into my working layout. So I grabbed this um, white tea looking uh, illustrated graphic and I'm thinking this would be a nice way to anchor the front of my wrapper, like the design for the front, kind of just says it all you know it's white tea <laughs> so it's perfect um and i have it behind my template so that you can kind of see where it fits within the page and i'm just copying and pasting elements from the template that i picked um, on the left uh, under the description green tea is how i found these images and i'm just placing them on my main design as like you know, little decorative background pieces and you'll notice that I'm flipping this other one upside down because when it wraps around the back you'll notice that like the uh, layout position has to flip 
and this will all make more sense when I get further into the, the design. So here I'm looking for, like I want a really cute type style for my, um, you know, for the name of the product and the scent and I want it to match the look of my graphics, but I wasn't like crazy about the one that came with the template. So you can mix and match the templates. You can totally do that. I even liked how the color is kind of tied right in. So obviously um, herbal drink is not gonna work for my bar soap layout. So we're gonna just change the type. So I'm gonna type bar and soap. It's important to let people know what your product is because you're covering it up with a wrapper and you don't want anybody to mistake your product for like something edible. That would be terrible. So I like to make what kind of product it is large and clear. And then secondary would be the fragrance. So white tea and ginger is the fragrance oil that I use in this bar soap. And that's the reason why I picked the art and the graphics. And I just think it's a perfect little match. So then I like these leaves, these little leaves that frame um, the flyer on the other template. So I'm going to copy them and paste them into my page one. That's my master design. And just kind of frame out that bar so, part, so it's not so plain on the top. But it, you know, it doesn't take away from the focus of what it is. It just nicely frames it out. So now we need to add some text. And all you have to do is hit the text button in the left hand column and then choose like a body text or subheading. And I'm adding the weight. So my bars are typically four ounces and 113 grams. It's important to put both. Um, both types of weights on there and I want it to be readable I don't like how it's overlapping the artwork at the bottom so what I typically do to get around this is I'll I don't want to go too too small on the type because you it, it actually has to be a certain size like a I think it's like an eighth of an inch tall or something like that and if you go too small, you'll be way below that that size. So I'm going to try to adjust my artwork, but then I don't like how the top of that graphic is getting into the the type. So, um, oh, we forgot to change this part. Let's make this say with kaolin clay. That's the type of clay that I added to my white tea bar. It gives it that like creamy look. So let's add that in there. And I just moved my template over to the side because it was, I can't select things if the template's on the top because it kind of covers up everything. But you'll notice that it does snap back to the middle really easy so you can get it back into place. Now what you see me doing is I'm, you can search your fonts for a narrow type of font. And it just filters all the fonts down to narrow options and I picked this, um, a grander narrow, something like that. And if you go with a narrower font, you don't lose the height that you need to um, meet that requirement for the, the height for your weight on your bar soap. So just to get it perfectly, oops, put my template back perfectly in space. We're almost there. You'll see me do this a lot. Like I'll kind of tweak it. It's the fine tweaks that make all the difference. And right now you see me just kind of snap it in. That line that shows up down the middle of the page snaps it to the middle. That, that way I always know everything's um, aligned, centered. And that's part of Canva. Canva naturally does that for you. It's really helpful. So I'm, I'm almost liking this. I feel like I'm not in love with this, this font. So I'm, I want something a little less bulky oh look at that look at how much space we got with this font now this one gives us the narrow space but with the more um, impact i like this one and now i can go back and increase my letter spacing more so it's more readable 
because I gained that extra space with a more narrow font. So that, this is really coming together nicely. Now I'm going to add my logo. We gotta put some branding on this. We want people to know who made it. So I'm gonna put my Tires Essentials logo on here. Just dropping the elements that I need at this point. And, uh, you know, I'm just loosely kind of scaling the size. I usually try to typically go for about an inch to an inch and a half of my width on my logo. Um, but it just depends on how it looks. And so I'm now I'm copying and pasting some elements from the front of my soap wrapper for the back of the soap wrapper. That way you keep the consistency of the fonts and it looks really like a nice professional cohesive design because um, as you look at the sides, as you look at the back, all of the fonts will, and the colors will match. And so that's kind of like a, a little tip on how to create a really balanced design for your packaging. So I switched to like a inline design for this bar soap because I felt like um, stacked, it was taking up too much space. I don't know, I just didn't like the way it felt. I feel like it's working better side by side here. And so we know what it is. We know that it's a bar soap. When you look at the side of the packaging, we know what fragrance it is. And so now I'm looking at this, I'm like, you'll see me do this a lot. Like I'm struggling with the balance and I didn't like the balance of the, ver the horizontal stacked on top of the horizontal stacked on top of the other horizontal. So I went with my vertical uh, version of my logo. I think it's really important for you to have both a horizontal version of your brand and a vertical version of your brand or something that fits like in the shape of a circle or a square because that comes in handy like for uh, different shapes of packaging and even like in the social media too you'll find it you know handy to have those different types of logos um, file types available. So now I'm scaling it, I like it, but the black to me seems a little too stark. So I'm gonna go to edit image, just select the image and go to edit. And I'm gonna adjust it to try to give it some color. I'm gonna try to give a black logo color. <laughs> so you can slightly change it. So I decrease the contrast, increase the brightness, like max it out on the, bright, on the brightness. Uh, and then I gave it a little saturation so we can get a little bit of that tint. Um, and I just moved my tint bar until I got a, a greenish <clears throat> color. And then I'm just going to warm up that green a little bit more. Not too much though, because I don't want to go crazy with it. Added some vibrance, but it's some, some of these sliders might not make that much of a dis difference. But I feel like it warmed up my logo a little bit which makes it more cohesive with the design. And now I just wanna make sure that the height all matches. Yes, I'm kinda, I'm that girl. <laughs> I get a little anal about these kind of things. So I want everything centered. I want everything balanced. I like you know, things to be consistent in, in height. Although I just kinda change it a little bit, but there, look at me. I wanna get the edges of this grouped text to line up so that when I hit center, it actually center it. Otherwise it's gonna to try to center it with that big space on the left hand side and that wasn't gonna work. So I ungrouped it and got rid of that extra space and now I pushed it back together and I'm gonna group them both back together and then you can center them. Whew. I know that's a lot of work but it pays off in the end because then you know, when you're looking at it, you're like, oh, something off there. And you're like, nope, I know it's not off because I did all of this work. <laughs> okay, so we have our elements here. Um, I am now flipping everything because as we create our soap wrapper and the bar is laying down on a table with the face side up, I want to be able to read this text. So it has to be flipped on the top side and I'm gonna copy and paste it and then it will actually have the um, a complete opposite you know position on the bottom so that way 
as it's laying on the table. No matter if you're looking at, at it from the top or the bottom, you can read it. All right, so now I'm going to go back to the text button on the left. We added a little bit of body text and I need to input the ingredients. That's important. We want to showcase all of these lovely ingredients we have included into our soap bar. So I'm just going to type it all out here. Um, we use some distilled water. This is like my tried and true recipe. Um, olive oil, so great. Coconut oil gives it that nice um, bubbly consistency. Palm oil gives it a nice hardness. Shea butter really gives it that after finish that is really moisturizing. Castor oil will add the little bubbles to it. Um, now I'm thinking, I'm looking at how everything's typed out. I'm like, well, this isn't matching. It doesn't match the, the style that I have on the front. So I went back and I chose the same font that I used on the front, which is Montserrat, something like that. <laughs> and, um, I'm going to bold ingredients so that pops so that you can know, hey, you're reading the ingredients. Um, I have it centered. I like that. Italicized to match the front. See how it's italicized in the front? And then I think I'm going to change the color to match the, the front too. It just softens it up a little bit, makes everything look nice and cohesive. Now I'm going to flip that text as well because as you flip your bar over from front to back, you'll notice that the, the type will need to be upside down in order to fold down and be readable. I want to add in my handmade in East Fell and my website, www.tiresessentials.com. That way people will know how to look up more information about your business and perhaps order more in the future. So you want to put that on there. Uh, like to maybe like give more weight and more presence to my web address. And then, um, this is pretty good actually. So I think I'm going to go ahead and rotate this one too. And it'll, you just want to get it at that 180 degree. Oop, that didn't work. One more time. 180 degree rotation. Bam. There we go. Uh, so you know what, I actually want the ingredients on top. And now I'm looking at it, I could probably expand the margins. The smaller margins so I can get everything on three lines. I'm gonna tighten up the, the text, not too tight, you want it to be readable, but. And, okay, that looks nice. And then I'm going to scale down my um, contact info so that it fits just within the space I left. Okay, I'm zooming out. Look at that, look at us. We almost got our perfect soap wrapper label done. So if we like it, let's go ahead and download it out of uh, Canva. We wanna do just that first page. We're gonna flatten it, add some crop marks so we can cut it, keep it in CMYK so that you can print it. And then when you, it, it's going to save it to your computer. You just pick a spot to save it and it will download pretty quickly. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to view it in the browser and see how it put the crop, the crop marks on there so that we can cut it. And I'm going to print on my HP inkjet printer at 100%. Do not scale it. Make sure it's just the right size. And so here's my little HP inkjet. This is a super cheap printer. I've had it for years and years. It does a great job. Prints really fast. This is plain white paper. And look how nice. And we got our crop marks and all the artwork looks nice and crisp. I love it. So I made like four, four copies. And I'm just gonna show you my little trick to copy or not, to cut. <laughs> multiple pieces at the same time. So I'm just using a straight cutter, table cutter, and I'm gonna cut almost through, but not all the way through on that first cut. And you'll see why, it's gonna make sense in the end. Then hold them tightly together. Let's go ahead and follow the crop marks on that side and go all the way through. 
let's do another um, 90 degree turn and cut using the crop marks on the bottom just pushing it up against that straight edge and come on down with the straight cutter and cutting all the way through I'm gonna do it again another 90 degree turn and see I still have that partial cut don't cut that off yet okay so now we're gonna line it up against the edge cut all the way down and you'll notice I'm using that end that was already partially cut lining up against that and look at that because if I didn't halfway cut through there it would have cut off that last crop mark and I would not be able to know where to cut the paper so here's my bar of soap so see that texture I was telling you about so I got my soap wrapping tool I got a little bit of washi tape some scissors my, I, I tried this template um, at the size that I showed you before and it was just a little bit too big so I am trimming off just a little bit on the edges and you may have to do this too if you purchase my soap wrapping tool I do include a general template but every bar is different so you may have to trim it up a little bit and just make note of what you what works for you and because of the shape at the top it's not a straight line I'm gonna try to make the edges of my wrapper lay down with a little glue just simple dollar store glue sticks <laughs> we don't have to go crazy with this this is very low tech okay and you'll see how this will all come together so I just did the side margin of the front of the box and now I'm going to center my cured bar of soap that's ready to sell this has been about cured for about seven weeks and I'm centering it both horizontally and vertically and then I'm going to take it and place it look at my soap wrapping tool place it into the center and I'm going to use my little top to hold down the flaps and the sides will keep it in place and we push it just nah let's go ahead and make sure this is set up perfectly in the center and then we're just going to set it into the base and you can kind of get a feel for you know if you if you got the alignment right because the sides are clear you can see that and it holds it in place for you while you kind of try to get this to wrap around and it's difficult because of that texture I know so it will take practice but it does allow you to get a pretty decent wrap on a not so clean surface so if you were using this with a perfectly rectangular or perfectly square soap it would be a lot easier you've seen I've shown in, in um, some of my other videos how easy it is but you can see it takes a little bit of finesse because the sides kind of wrap down like it kind of angles down on the sides but the top of the slider will hold it in place for you and then you're going to pinch in the sides again on the bottom and create a little triangular shape that will also fold down up to meet the first fold see I'm just going to show you slowly how you do that and then the idea is to uh, tape this down so it holds its shape so that's pretty good once you get a pretty good fold go ahead and slide the slider down it's going to hold it for you while you get your tape and I found this little washi tape like in the discount section I love to shop the discount sections at uh, Staples at Hobby Lobby so one of those places I found this and the washi tape will hold it down and now you just take it out of the soap wrapping tool and notice you can see it's kind of soft where I put the glue um, but you just press it down and crease it down on the side so the glue holds it and you've got a wrapped bar of soap and see how the sides are the right direction the back is the correct direction that simple now go ahead and wrap the entire loaf of soap this template will be available on our website at www.tiresessentials.com as well as our soap wrapping tool that is custom made for your bars. If you like this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe. I will be posting more videos like this even more frequently. Thanks again. Have a great day.